Hello, my name is Claude Durand. I have been invited today to talk about retour interpretation. Well, we should start by defining what retour interpretation is. You probably know that usually interpreters work from one foreign language called a B or a C language, B if it is active, C if it is only passive. So they work from a B or C language into the A language, which is their main language, usually their mother tongue. Well, retour interpretation means working from your mother tongue or main language into your B language, that is a foreign language. And in order to acquire the skills of a retour interpreter, you have to work on two sides, I would say. One, that's the command, the active command of the foreign language, the second active language, or the B language. So that's one part. And on the other side, you need to work on your command of the retour interpretation technique. So I will try to explain why it is so important to work on these two counts, if you like, in these two fields of activity. Let's start with the active command of the B language. If you want to learn the skills of a retour interpreter, you must check first if you meet certain preconditions. First, you have to be able to express yourself in the B language in a fluent way with not too many hesitations. You have to have an articulation which is as clear as possible with a fairly neutral accent in order for the audience to understand you easily. Your grammar must be generally correct, especially syntax. And you must have an extensive vocabulary and the ability to distinguish between what we call registers. So the style you use in different situations. So these are very important preconditions that you have to meet before you start acquiring the retour interpretation techniques. There is also one item which is important but that you can acquire with time and while you are studying the interpretation techniques. That is the knowledge of standard rhetorical expressions, which are pretty common, which come up in any statement, which are used when addressing an audience, starting a speech or ending a speech or jumping from one argument to another. As a retour interpreter, you will have to use these expressions, these standard expressions, very easily, effortlessly, I could say, in consecutive interpreting, but also in simultaneous interpreting at the speed of the spoken word. But this way, if you have these expressions ready for use, you will be able to concentrate more on conveying the core message of the original speaker. And that's the main task that you have to perform. So, these are the preconditions, if you like, the skills related to the active command of the B language that you have to possess in order to become a good retour interpreter. But there's another side to it, as I mentioned, that is the command of the retour interpretation technique. Well, when we listen 
to a statement which is delivered in our main language, our mother tongue, well, we don't pay too much attention at it. Well, not always. Not when we are not doing things professionally. But when you are working from a message delivered in your mother tongue and converting it into a B language, in fact, you have to listen and you have to analyze the message as attentively as you would do if you were interpreting from B to A. Because the aim is always to convey, to understand first and convey then the speaker's essential attention, uh, intention. Then, a second kind of skill that you have to acquire working into the B language, which is something that normally you learn and assimilate very easily working into the mother tongue from a foreign language, that is to learn how to distance yourself from the form of the source language in order to avoid literal translation, which very often doesn't mean anything. Third tip or piece of advice, if you like, well, you should look for simplicity. Apply what we call the KISS principle. Keep it short and simple. It means to use every possible means to achieve simplicity of expression. How can you do that? Well, one good technique is to cut the original message into units of meaning, short chunks, what professionals call salami tactic. Why is that? What for? Well, this way, you won't be hampered by the difficulties of respecting complex structural, uh, syntactical structures, gender agreements, plural, singular, tenses, while you still have to finish your sentences properly. And you know that in simultaneous interpretation, it's not that easy. To be simple, also, well, you should endeavor to use short and clear sentences. Even in the original statement, these sentences are long and the style is generally heavier in this original speech. Then, what to do with, um, let's say, images, metaphors, colorful expressions? Well, unless you have immediately the exact equivalent on the tip of your tongue, then do not try to translate a proverb, an image, a metaphor in the A language with a proverb, an image or a metaphor in the B language. No. Instead, try above all to get the idea across simply in the retour language. Even if the actual form that you choose in the B language is lunch less punchy, less colorful than in the original speech. And I think this is very important when you are a student, especially when you learn the skill, you should follow this approach because you cannot be sure that the image in question will be immediately and correctly understood by your audience sometimes. And the danger is to make the original A language speaker sound ridiculous. This can occur frequently when working into a B language because we don't master all nuances as well as we do in the A language. And making ridiculous the speaker should be avoided at all costs. At last, I would like to add a last piece of advice regarding preparation of your retour interpretation. Well, generally speaking, 
An interpreter, a good professional, has to prepare for the themes and the subjects that he will discuss, that he will have to deal with during an international meeting. This is even more crucial in the case of retour interpretation, working into a B language. If you are preparing a retour assignment, then you should prepare your subject even more consciously than otherwise. With regard, first, to the basic issues at stake in the meeting, know what is going to happen, if you like, or is likely to happen, and re with regard to the specialized terminology. Every subject has its jargon. And you will realize that a good command of these meeting-specific specific elements that you can prepare will enable you to concentrate on the rest of your task. And this way, you will be fully in control of the core message that you are conveying. That's the main task that you have to perform. Of course, there might be some imperfections of form which will crop up occasionally, but these imperfections will in fact be easily forgiven by the listener. Sometimes they won't be even noticed by your audience because these little imperfections will in no way hinder the effective communication of your message. So, in conclusion, to sum up, I would say that a good retourist is not necessarily an interpreter whose form of expression verges on perfection and sounds authentic in the B language, especially if this is at the expense of fidelity to the content and if it is at the risk of telling a different story altogether. And that happens sometimes, sadly. On the contrary, I would say that any such performance solely, uh, aiming solely at the elegance of the packaging is not professional and should be rejected out of hand. So what is a good rhetorist? Well, I would say that the good rhetorist is rather an interpreter who, thanks to his or her powers of analysis and synthesis, and with a good subject or meeting preparation, is above all striving to convey a clear and simple message to the audience, to the delegates in the room, or to the fellow interpreters who are sitting in the other booth and taking the interpreter on relay. So, the ideal retourist knows that his or her active resources are indeed good, but not as good as the resources he possesses or she possesses in the A language. And therefore, the retourist will adopt a cautious strategy. A strategy which will make things easier for the interpreter and which will avoid blunders which would make the speaker sound ridiculous. What should be avoided, as I said. Naturally, in order to constantly improve your active common, uh, command of the B language, if you want to bring it as close as possible to an A language, well, as a retourist, you will constantly continue to enrich your linguistic and cultural background in the B language. And this can be done by various means. Thanks, for instance, to careful reading of good newspapers in the press, good articles on the internet, there are so many now in the B language, listening to radio and podcasts, watching TV, videos, going to the cinema, or even sometimes simply taking notes when you are visiting, for instance, the country or the countries where your B language is spoken. 
As you can see, improving your interpretation skills in the B language is a lifetime job. It requires effort, discipline, continue, continuity, but it can also be very rewarding. In many situations, when you are working as a rhetorist, especially in bilateral meetings, you will see that you are the sole mediator between two parties who otherwise could not understand each other. You are an essential link in communication. And this can be a very positive feeling and bring you a genuine job satisfaction. Thank you.